Hey everybody, welcome to Hanging With Yours Truly. I decided, you know, I needed to get another guest in here today, so uh, I'm going to let him introduce himself. Hello everybody, it's Chaz again, your your favorite uh, dude from channel Chaz Rad. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't Locked really on, done bro. anything lately with your channel, but at the same time, I mean... I feel like you haven't really had a lot of motivation to do anything there. I've had like zero motivation to upload upload anything. Zero motivation. I don't even. When was the last time I uploaded anything? I have to you, check that out. So I already know for a fact it was like in December, and it was a bunch of thank yous to yours truly. Because you're no, I, actually, I did one other video. Really? I don't know if. I, oh, that's no, not public. Okay. Oh. It was the cookies video. Oh, I remember that. Okay. See, I thought that happened before or during. That was in February. Oh. Oh, my but, goodness. But, but, yeah, the last public video is in December. You're absolutely right about that. Yeah. Because I remember it was around Christmas time, and I was, like, really booked with work. And I don't really want to talk about work because it's a very strenuous topic. No one yes. needs to hear about that. But at the same time, I mean, talking about presents and christmas i'm totally fine with that by the way did i mention i love christmas christmas is the greatest holiday i mean it's not even the aspect of like getting stuff and receiving things and it's both which is great no I it's mean, about you giving give, you give your friends gifts and you get the and then they give you stuff back it's all good yeah. you get to see how happy they are with the presents you get and then they get to see how happy you are with what they get you it's I'm all great get you something I'm going to get you something too for Christmas, but we still got like we still got like a long time until Christmas. <laughs> nah, bro, it's it's around the corner. <laughs> it's almost July. It's it's around we're the corner. Almost there. We're almost there. We're almost there, you know what? Like we're halfway there, buddy. We're, we got like we got less than 6 months. You know, we're on the downhill slope. It's just right around the corner. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, don't worry I will about have it. To, um, Christmas, man. Christmas is going to be. Um, I don't know how it is going to be this year. It's. I'm, I haven't. Was I at my new job? No, I wasn't at my current job last Christmas. So we'll see how that is. Yeah, I felt like it's been a little while. So if you want to give anybody an update, or not, I mean, it's your choice. But at the same time, I mean, uh, you know, you and me, we we try to converse outside this sort of thing, and we try to yeah. converse inside and. Uh, we've been doing a lot of Plague Night, and I feel like eventually we'll get to Spectre Night whenever that happens. I'm not really in a rush. And then we'll do the King Night on. Whenever that whenever happens. Whenever that happens, yeah. Um, Mega Man 5 might happen before that. Yeah, I'm thinking that might be the yeah. thing. Oh my god, I'm, I am not ready for Mega Man 5. I just want everyone out there to know that. Have you played it at all yet? Yeah, I have actually. I have is that, played what, it. Who, who's it? Is that the one with Napalm Man? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I mean, I have to think about this for a second, but if memory recalls, it is. I think I tried Mega Man Five. I think I went straight to Napalm Man stage. I think graphically it looks fantastic, but it's pretty. Yeah, it was pretty neat. But other than that, I mean, I got to be honest, it's pretty lackluster. I mean, graphically it looks really good. Uh, uh, it plays out very similar to your typical Mega Man game, so I guess, like, you know, it's still good regardless. So we got Napalm Man, right? Yeah. So I think, Mega I think Man, gonna be the fan favorite, you know. Mega Man, what, like, what's, what's, 11? Uh, I think they're up to 10. Alright, well the next Mega Man, Mega Man 11, they're gonna introduce Agent Orange Man. <laughs> I don't... <laughs> I gotta be honest, Chaz. I think, uh, I think that might be a little too real. That'd be that'd be like adding that'd be like adding a uh, criminal criminal charge man. Criminal charge man. He's he's also in the that'd game. Be, that'd be uh, that uh, in addition his brother, uh, war, worm criminal man. And then we got um Sergeant Slaughter. Sergeant Slaughter. That's the mini boss. Uh, no, man, he's he's actually a thing. He's part of the G.I. Joe crew. 
Oh, for real? Yeah, real for American real. heroes. There's, there's a guy called Serge Slaughter. I, 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 GI Joe is like straightly or, or slightly before my time, so uh, well, I didn't I mean, get to watch you, that you on TV. On, I gotta be honest. Uh, it's before my time as well, and I'm an old bastard, so I don't really know what that's saying. But somehow I know what Sergeant. I know who Sergeant Slaughter is. Yeah, eighty. That was eighty five. Eighty three to eighty five. Yeah. Yeah. That's way before my time. That, that is like three years before my time, which in turn is actually more like four years. Cause it's more like. Well, little, little yeah. do you know, Gilda was born at the very end of nineteen eighty eight. Yeah. It ended in eighty six, actually. Oh wow! So I mean, three years then. I well, didn't watch more, more or less uh, three years. I probably would have liked this show. I think <laughs> it had a PSA at the end of every episode. Well, I would definitely like. Maybe is it online? No, I definitely uh, watch the, the PSAs. Uh, someone. No, has... I'm talking about the uh, actual show. Is it on like? Is it available to watch on like? I don't know. One uh, of those I'm sure like... you can find them. I- I'm willing right. to bet, like without a doubt, you can go to some website and they'll probably have them. Okay, I'm going to find out, because I want to watch G.I. Joe. Because <laughs> he's a real American hero. G.I. Joe! <laughs> Cobra Commander. <laughs> oh, I, I try to imitate his voice to do Spectre Knight, and it fells horribly. When was the uh, Street Fighter cartoon? Uh, I don't know. I want to say in the late 80s. Is, is, is this I, Gildan I, trivia time where Gildan tries to answer all the burning questions of when production of certain Wait Scales a minute. Were... No, it it was early 90s. Really? 94 to 90, was... 94 to 97. Oh, okay. So this this was I don't remember that at all. Well, I mean, you were probably pretty young, so you probably didn't yeah, have but... the capacity to go look for it. Yeah, but I watched Power Rangers around that time. I remember Power Rangers just fine. My mom would not let me watch Power Rangers. Go, go Power Rangers. Yeah, she wouldn't let me go watch Power Rangers. I watched, um, what else did I watch? Gargoyles? That show was awesome. Oh, yeah, that was a really dark show for Disney, but at the same time, it was it was badass. Uh, you know what my mom let me watch? What did she let you watch? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That I watched too. That was yeah, great. Yeah, that, that was classic cartoons right. right there. Here's a cartoon. I don't know if you know the ti- I don't know what the title of it is, but they're like these like mutated sharks, right? Oh, and, I think I know and, what you're talking they were about. Like, they were like super buff too. Like what show was that? Uh, I kind of I want to say Shark off. Attack. I I I, I or, love or, to know what I don't that know. was. Feeding Frenzy is like something I want to say, but that's a game. Um, Frenzy. Feeding Frenzy is a fun game, by the way. I like that game. I'm going to look up animated shark. I'm looking up shark attack. I didn't see that. Street Sharks? That's it. It was a ripoff of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I remember this show. I I had, like, toys from it because, like, it was, like, McDonald toys or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess I the appeal is they're Joe. like super buff sharks, and they they do basically what you expect Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to do. Yeah, Ripster Jab Street X. Yeah, the the Big Hammerhead Slam- Shark one was my favorite. Big Slamu. <laughs> he, he uses a skateboard. That's radical, dude. <laughs> so Because, I mean, let's be honest. What was the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles missing? A skateboard. Well, didn't they have those, like, jet skateboards? Oh, they probably did. I mean, they, really, when it comes down to it, what didn't Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles have? Jab, Street X, Slamu, and Ripster. Yeah, I mean, it's it's so Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in the 90s that it's it's it, it, it hurts. <laughs> Shark Apocalypse Now is the last episode. <laughs> <laughs> Radical, dude. Every single episode has some some like form of shark in it. Like, oh, episode... well, absolutely. You have to have the shark puns. Sir Shark a lot. Uh, space sharks, eco sharks, satellite yeah, sharks. Yeah. Sharkotic reaction. You know what? I'm surprised they don't have. <laughs> 
<laughs> what? Okay, brace yourself for this. Are you are you sitting down? I'm I'm sitting down. Okay. I'm surprised they didn't have a title called Sharknado. See, that was um, that wasn't a thing until like recently. I know, but I'm surprised it wasn't back then. <laughs> I'm looking. I'm looking if there's a shark NATO one. Oh, there was not. I guarantee there's you. There's Jurassic Shark. Jurassic Shark. <laughs> so shark what? They got storm. a what they, a megalodon. There's Shark Storm. I think that's as close as we're getting to Shark NATO. Oh, that's absolutely as close. As to we're Shark getting. or not to Shark? <laughs> what? So they're yeah. doing Romeo or Juliet? It has nothing to do with. Ro- it has nothing to do with Romeo and Juliet. Oh come on! And that not, even a, not even like off. some. Terrible star-crossed lover romance plot. That's Hamlet. That's Hamlet anyway. What to be or not to be? You're not to be. Oh, I guess you're right. So, okay, <laughs> so so no like family murder mystery plot. No uh. No regis- vengeance. <laughs> no, this the the uh, summary to, to shark or not the shark is the street sharks have suddenly become human again due to a formula made by Doctor. Paranoid as part of a plot to keep the street sharks human permanently. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, basically cured them. They can be normal now. Do they want to be sharks or not to be sharks? Ooh. Well, obviously they're gonna be like, man, remember when we could turn into sharks? That was totally tubular, dude. Well, that's like halfway through the season, so obviously they turned back into sharks. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think it'd be more impressive if they didn't. <laughs> yep, the whole show up. We're no more. We're no longer it sharks. Turns into, it turns into Beverly Hills nine zero two one zero. Oh man, they had dinosaurs. Oh yeah, this... they had like dinosaur teenage mutant ninja turtles, and I hear it was absolute garbage, but that didn't stop them from trying. Now I want to watch this show again. <laughs> or <laughs> this show just sounds like everything that's like I would love as a kid, but like it sounds terrible. Like today's practice was. I, I think uh, the only show that they need to bring back is uh, Dino Riders. I don't. I, I don't think I watched that show. I don't think anyone did, and that's why it didn't sell. I'm gonna have to look it up, see if I can under if I know what them what you're talking about. Dino Riders. Um No, because I mean it was only it only lasted one year. Yeah, yeah. It, it did not get very high. It reception. lasted from October to December in nineteen eighty eight. So I definitely don't know what this is. It looks kinda cool though. Yeah, I mean, I mean look at it. It's like dinosaurs and they have military hardware like on, on attached to them. T Rex has like laser helmet. <laughs> Dude, I mean how badass can you get? It's awesome. Why didn't this sell? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's like what the nostalgic critic was saying. How did this, this not catch on? This is this 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 T Rex has like a Gatling gun. <laughs> right? This is like something I could imagine if you create a whole cur- like a whole video game like based on it, like some sort of 2D brawler. I would, or like, I would or like not. something like Contra. And like uh, Contra with dinosaurs? Yeah, but with like laser beams and like hardcore military equipment just like attached to them. Or hell, I, I hear that like the like something along these lines were like gonna be in uh, Jurassic World, or that was gonna be the base concept where it was gonna be like you know uh, the group was bringing dinosaurs, but they were gonna try to make them like military, like like inept, just like the bread for military, and then attach laser cannons uh, and something like so that. So it's all soldiers with dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> nice. But you know what I mean? Like, it, it sounds pretty badass, right? It's like, can you imagine soldiers riding on top of Jurassic, like, uh, T-Rex? I'm, uh, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fulfill your dreams right now. Oh, yeah? There's a game where it's called, it's called Dino D-Day, man. Dino D-Day. And it's World War Two with dinosaurs and, like, humans and dinosaurs are, like, fighting. Hell like, yeah. Like, the allied forces have, like, a, like... A little triceratops, so it's like a Gatling gun on his oh, side. Oh, hell yeah! 
And like the Axis have like um, what what do they have? They have like Raptors and stuff. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's 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 pretty fun actually. You want to know I have. The, is this an RTS? No, it's a first person shooter. Oh, okay, I was gonna say I think the only way that like this this idea could be incorporated in another game outside like what we mentioned, like another genre, is maybe yeah. like an RTS. Yeah, I could see that working as an RTS. Yeah, like, uh, you got two sides, they're, like, trying to revive dinosaurs, and then they're like, okay, you know what, um, let, let's go kill, like, the opposing side with our giant T-Rexes with laser cans on top of them. Yes. Fuck yeah. <laughs> let's do it. It's the most American thing I can think of. In fact, it's my new American dream. And you might be like... <laughs> Geldum, what about the what about the genetically bred T Rexes? And I'm gonna say, what about the genetically bred T Rexes? They're abominations now. <laughs> didn't Richard Grant say? Didn't Richard Grant say it best in Jurassic Park Three when he's like, uh, "I love like something about dinosaurs, but those things are not dinosaurs." Um, I'm just sad living the, so. the I quote, know. but like, I, I don't know. I didn't it, see it was, Jurassic. It was something 3. along those lines, and then Jurassic Park three also introduced the Spinosaur, which actually was a carnivorous, like giant killing thing. To which yeah. I say, let's grab the laser cannon and all the bitches. Spinosaur with a laser cannon. Hell oh yeah. man! G- give him like one of those, like uh, give him an RPG while we're at it. An RPG can even fire that. Listen, all we all he needs to do is have it mounted onto his shoulders or replace his hands with it, and uh, I don't know, have someone on top of him riding it, and and mm-hmm. it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll work out just fine. What could possibly go wrong? You know what? Nothing. Nothing could go wrong. With our dinosaur military army, we'll be in stop. We'll be unstoppable. We just take our, you know, anybody that messes with us. Our inevitable victory. They, they, they get, um, they get either eaten or destroyed by dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> I have hey, no I'm idea where we're going with this. I'm for it. I'm for it too. <laughs> I, I'm just. I let's, just want everyone to let's know survive. when I woke up today. Uh, dinosaurs with laser cannons and RPG rockets and whatever have you was not on my agenda. It's just something that got brought up when we talked about Dino Riders. Dino Rider. When is it not a good time to talk about Dino Riders? When is not a good time to talk about dinosaurs? Which, if you ask me, is it's always a good time to talk about dinosaurs. I almost took the dinosaur classic in college. It was a real hard class, and I don't, I, I, I didn't think I could do it, so I left. No. I, t- I took another science class. I wish I, maybe now, maybe when I'm older, maybe I'll take a, you know, another dinosaur class. I understand. You know, you know, time where I'm not worried about finances oh, and yeah. stuff. Absolutely. And I could, you know, I could take like, like, um, well, I could just, you know, what, what's the word? Enrich myself. Yeah. Yes. Enriching is always good. I, I got, I got a topic. Speaking okay. about dinosaurs and, and animals and life and horrible abominations. Uh, Evo, the Gattel- search for Eden. Yeah, I saw something. You said something about yeah, that. Yeah, so I I recently found out. Apparently, it's one of the rarest NES car- or SNES cartridges. Yeah. And so, get this: the basic cartridge, like not mint mm-hmm. or anything, sells for over two hundred dollars. That's pretty darn good. I have mine with the box, and I want everyone to know. Okay, like I'm going to there, tell you right now. There's a card here. You can go watch my let's play, but I legitimately played my cartridge on that thing. Like I'm going to tell you right now. I'm looking at I'm looking at one on on eBay right now. Yeah. It's with the box and like everything. Yeah. It's going for $800. Oh yeah. Like uh if you have a a mint factory sold can like cart, it can go for about 1000. Ooh. Or like even higher. But my point is like, it is an expensive SNES a, game, yeah, and I didn't even think about it, and then when I got mine, it was, 
Like, it did not cost me that much, I guarantee you. But now, like, having it and everything, it's like, damn, I got, like, some treasure growing. This one's got everything. This one's, like, mint condition. Mm. Actually, it's not mint condition because it's open. But it's got all, like, the little inserts and everything. This one's going for $1,050. Yeah. Unfortunately, I do not have the instruction booklet. But otherwise, I got the box and I got the cartridge. So I figure that's going to be worth, like, what, $300, $400? I would, yeah, I would, say, I would say probably, like, $300 for that. So my point is, you know, it's like what, what, I got most of the components. So uh, it's, it's got to be worth something. If the box is in good shape and everything too, uh, that's got that's a good three hundred. It's all I think. faded, but at the same time, it, it's pretty much just like as you expect. Yeah, so like yeah. I, said, I, mean, I, hey, I yeah. probably got like about yeah. Here, here's one product. right now. It's it's a box in the game. It's like three sixty. Yeah. So, you know, it's like uh, it's gonna be real tragic if I ever fall into financial times like hard financial times because it's gonna be one of those things where it's like I I love my game, but I really need the money. <laughs> Now it's, it's, uh, it's, ho it's hopefully it won't ever have to come to that. Right? I, I gotta be honest though. Uh, you you ever have those moments where you you have a collectible and you think it's worth something and then you find out it's probably not. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, I, I I do understand that. Cause uh, I, Beanie Babies. Anyone yep. remember Beanie Babies? You want to want you want to know what one of the most expensive like high selling like beanie babies is which one the, the uh the elephant one? Oh, i mean probably but that wasn't what i was gonna bring up uh the princess diana bear okay uh that one is really really pricey it's it's worth a small fortune like we're talking i want to say about seventy five thousand, maybe even more maybe Jeez. less but my point is it's it's up in that range and I had one, but here's the thing. There's a lot of counterfeiters. There's a lot of things associated to, like, Beanie Babies, especially, like, the newer ones when I was collecting them. Yeah. See, I, I found out that a lot of the ones that were popular around my time, like, 1993 to, like, you know, the the mid-90s, uh, you yeah. were, they were on, like, the fourth-gen tags, and those aren't really worth a whole lot, so it's kind of like... When looking at Beanie Babies, there's several factors to consider, namely, like, uh, based on the tag, based on, like, the materials of the product. So, so it's kind of like, some, you might think, hey, I got, I got like, this certain Beanie Baby, it's gotta be worth something, but it turns out there's, like, four different variants, and you might have, like, the one that's worth about five dollars. You were not kidding about this one. Yeah. and uh, I'm looking at one. Oh, go ahead. I'm I'm looking at one right now. Yeah, it's in it's in a box, mint condition kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, PVC ghost version, whatever. I don't know. Right. Five hundred thousand yeah. dollars. So my point is, oh like with the God. Princess Diana bear, it's like there's a lot of counterfeits like out right now. Yeah. And uh, also, I'm willing to bet like there's certain conditions if you actually legitimately have one, if it's worth something, like. You gotta you gotta make sure that it meets all the qualifications before you're like, oh man, I got this like you know half a million dollar PD baby that I could sell and retire and get a yacht. Holy crap! Yeah. And you wanna know a lot of yeah, I see I see is? the counterfeit I actually, one. I had a Princess Diana bear. Yeah. And I think I gave it to Was my it mom, and I think she still has it, so I could like legitimately look at it. But you sh you should definitely get it looked at to see if it's if you're sitting on a pile of gold or a pile of feathers but my point is like even if it was even even if legitimately it's worth like as much as i say it is i don't know and so it's kind of like uh, i don't know I, I also feel like it'd be awkward if she did have it and i'd be like hey uh mom can i have this back <laughs> she might be like yeah sure she might be like uh but you gave that to me Say you're going to buy her a nice uh, steak dinner <laughs> after you sell it. Well, I mean, that, that's the other side. What, like, that's the other side to it. It's like, what if it turns out that it's only, like, uh, it, it's like a pile of feathers, you know? It's a pile of beans that the Beanie Baby's yeah, made of. Yeah, you know, it's like, uh, it's not going to be worth much. And in fact, I saw on, like, this website, it's like, uh, 
there's so many counterfeits out right now uh not a lot of people are gonna take you really serious if you're like i have a princess diana beanie baby i yeah i was looking at all the listings just now like there's like I, it's hilarious because some are like five hundred thousand dollars and then there's like two dollars yeah because i mean there's a lot of counterfeits there's a lot of reproductions i mean that's kind of what it is with like evo the sushi and you'll go look and you'll be like oh hey there's like evo for like thirty dollars and it's just a reproduction card yep so it's it's not like they're not worth anything it's just that you gotta look for the signs and you gotta look to see if it's legit because you know it might be worth something and it might not and that's the deal with collectibles i might be like hey look at my shit it's really amazing or i might be like uh yeah my shit um it's just shit that's what i'm doing with but at the same time you know it's one of those interesting things where you're just like when i first read up about the princess diana bear it's just like I had one of those moments where I'm just like, holy shit, I'm, 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 I might be a thousand here, you know, I might, I might have the money. Oh, I could, I could finance a house, I could, I could get a new car. <laughs> and then I started foaming at the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but then it's like, you know, you realize, oh, shit. Because, you know, you take a closer look and you're like, oh, wait, I might not. <laughs> It might be, like, not the thing that I'm looking at. I mean, Grant, I, I don't know. It could legitimately be, like, the real article. There's so many unknown variables here. Yeah. Uh, I think the biggest one, though, the one that, like, really tells if you have, like, one of the genuine articles is, like, what the bean material is. Because that seems to be one of the biggest uh, high points of PVC. it. PVC. Yeah. Because, well, there's two materials. I think there's PVC and then there's PVE. I'm not sure if that's right. correct, but uh, if it's PVE, it's not going to be worth much, but if it's PVC, it, it's actually more or less legit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, it might be the other way around, but I think it is PVC. It's it's more... The ones that were all like 500,000 all said PVC yeah, on yeah, it. Yeah, so I'm, I'm willing to bet if you have the PVC version, it's going to be worth a small fortune, so long as it's actually looking real good. Yeah. And the tag's still intact. If that, yeah, that tag, if that tag's not good. I mean, like, you, yeah. you, you might have to knock down a couple thousand, like tens of thousands, but at the same time, you'll still probably get a couple thousand out of it. You might, yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, it's still, right. it's still the PVC, I don't know. I don't know how, like, degradation and... and I, I don't know why that matters, because it's not like you're going to rip open the Beanie Baby to take out the PVC pipe. Well, it's pipe. not that. It's just what the tag on – it's what the butt tag says. I guess because it was rare, less, less press or whatever. I don't know. I, don't know. It's, it's, I, I guess it's just – it's the collector's value. Yeah. And that, that's why everyone cares about, you know. That's the deal with collectibles. If it's, it's, if it's actually worth something, they want to have the genuine article. Mint is right. preferable, but I mean, uh, I I don't know. I'm not really I'm, I'm not I'm a collector, but not of the right caliber. Now, I just want everything. I don't care what the quality is. I just kind of want everything. I want something that works, just like me. Yeah. Yeah. But I digress. It's not. It's not a huge issue. See, I, I'm fine with just owning Evo. For me, that's like, that's my treasure, you know. That that is like yeah. It's my favorite game. It's like the thing I can say, hey, I got something to fall back on if anything happens. But at the same time, I hope it never does, because legitimately, this is my favorite game on my list. It has a really cool mechanic. I love it. Was a, it. It's a cool game. Yeah, I, lo I mean, it, it's hard, but I'm I think it did a really good job of showing how to like get past like a lot of the really difficult things that you have to do in my let's play. And you did the uh, like um what if you said, "Yeah, let's side with the T-Rexes." Yeah, you know, you well, that I mean, too. I, I just I wanted to show off all the alternate endings and granted, you have to understand, I was playing out of cards, so every time I did a false end, I had to replay up to that point. That's a lot of playing. Yeah, but my point is, I did it, and, like, no, maybe, I don't know. I'm not trying to plug in my channel or try to praise myself. I'm just saying I legitimately did try to show off as much as you could with that game, and I had a lot of fun doing it. And maybe someday, maybe, 
I may just replay it. You're just proud of your, um, what you've done. There's nothing wrong with that. It was my second Let's Play, followed by, well, I mean, it was my second Let's Play. First one was Mischief Makers. Third one was, I think, uh, Quest 64. What was, um, Parasite Eve? Two? You played that, right? Yeah, I played Parasite 2. I didn't play Parasite Eve. Parasite Eve 2, then. Uh, that, like, that was an early one. Yeah, I think that was... I want to say 6. Okay. It was either 6 or 5th. Um, you had that one you were playing, but it's the Donkey Kong one. Uh, Donkey Kong 64? No, 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 no. It's, um... Oh, Donkey Kong Country 2 with my stepsister. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, that I don't remember. We didn't even finish that one. We're, we've there's been trying to, but uh, it, there's that other one, that other Donkey Kong one that's like Mario, like oh, old yeah, school Donkey Mario. Oh yeah, Donkey Kong ninety four. That, that yeah. was an early one. That was for Game Boy. I, I remember that. Yeah, was like that's a mini series that I did a long time ago. That that was all like back in the past, man. Rem- reminiscing. I don't even know how I'm gonna do all the cards, but see, I know your I know your vil- filmography. S- see, you're like you're like a regular Gildum historian. Yeah. Yeah. You... And then and then you uh you had the zealot off your blade. <laughs> I don't know why a lot of people happen to kind of be drawn to uh. Eternal Darkness, but I, I, I should really get it, back to like it, just showing all the alternative endings. The thing about Eternal Darkness is it was such like a kind of a cult game. Yeah. That like that I mean I talked to somebody about it. He was saying, "Hey, ever heard of Eternal Darkness?" I was like, "Yeah, my friend played it. His video lets plays of it." And he, uh, you know, he he zealot off his blade all the time. I, I, I did it completely blind, also, <laughs> which um. Maybe that was it the aspect, because it was kind of like... Wasn't that like... When Didn't you like choose like the harder difficulty, N- no, too? No, no. Actually, it turns out, I think I chose one of the easier ones, or I chose the middle okay. one, because uh, depending on the uh, the thing that you choose... Yeah. It kind of depends, like, what you do, or, like, like, the effects. And I don't remember what everything was, but I think it... I, it was one of the other ones that actually makes it a lot harder, because you're given less benefits from something you got to um uli off your blade because uli off is the best one <laughs> well you know manor off it's all about that man pargon 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 yeah pargon Par- i remember pargon was like the thing that just basically enhances everything pargon, i start i start realizing pargon. that also Anyways. You just say Pargon a hundred times when you when you when you do the runes or whatever the heck they were called yeah, in that game. Because you had to do the seven point spell and the, and basically all the seven points were just Pargon. Pargon, Pargon, Pargon. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, with this small remembrance of past events, I think we're gonna end off the part. Uh, if Ch- okay. If Chaz has anything he wants to add, you know, I'm I'm gonna give him the closing segment. Um, I don't really have anything to add, but this was good. This is a good talk. Um, remember to tip your waitresses.